Hi all, I have another topical game to show you in the Sicilian Four Nights variation today. Yarwin Jones, one of the leading UK grandmasters, was playing against Magnus Carlsen back in the 2007 Gorsdall Classic GM tournament. Let's have a look at this. So Garwin playing white, e4, we have Magnus playing c5, knight c3, and now Magnus plays e6. So the three most popular moves in this position e6, d6, and knight c6 lead to the core kind of variations of the Sicilian defense. So e6 has an emphasis on the dark square bishop, giving priority to that and the possible uh, options that would create. So knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes, knight takes d4, and we have the four knights. Now here, Garwin Jones tests a different variation that we've seen uh, from from previous videos. Knight takes c6. We have b takes and e5 now. So this is quite interesting and has been played in quite a few uh, very strong over the board game encounters between grandmasters. So it offers white. It offers interesting imbalances rather. Uh, white has marked the d6 square. Uh, sometimes white can be a bit fragile on the light squares. After knight d5, we have knight e4. And here there's two key moves uh, that are mostly seen. Magnus chooses bishop b7. The other move is to prompt f4 by playing queen c7, hitting e5, and also protecting d6 against knight d6. This move is interesting. For example, f4, queen b6, c4, check. This has all been seen before with f5 now. This is a very topical line. Pinning the pawn, unpinning, the knight goes back. The, the queen is attacked. Bishop c5, bishop takes, queen takes, queen d6, queen b6, b3, bishop b7. This has all been seen before in numerous games. It's kind of theoretical start position. And it's thought to be here. I mean, the engine gives it about equal this position. So quite theoretical, this line, actually, uh, with queen c7. So this is a slightly rarer bird move that Magnus chooses, bishop b7. And you might think... Isn't this a little bit odd? Isn't it actually inviting the bishop to kind of be uh, squeezed a bit? C4, C5, well, blocked in, hemmed in. And that's exactly what white did. C4, gaining a tempo. Knight B4, and now C5, which seems to put a lock on this bishop. However, this bishop does have A6 to play with, potentially. First of all, though, Bangladesh plays Queen B8, hitting E5. Uh, queen a5, you might think, is uh, a little bit interesting. Hitting c5 and, and nasty double checks, discovered checks. But white has bishop d2 here. And this is a very strong pin. For example, bishop takes a3. And this is just winning material. Uh, that's no consequence here. Bishop c3. And white's just material up. So that's unplayable to play queen a5. Because of bishop d2. So queen b8, looking at e5, and now white played f4. So you might think the the light squares are, are slightly more outposty after this move, putting a pawn on dark squares. The uh, light squares light up. And you might think, well, what about knight d6 check here? That is interesting. After bishop takes, uh, say e takes, to start off with a5 is a key move. And this position, it looks as though with king f8 uh, here in particular, black has enough counterplay here. It should be about equal. Uh, the knight's nicely perched on d5. And if we look at uh, this again with uh, instead c takes, again, it seems as though black should be fine. There's enough counterplay, it seems. So um, f4 was played. Instead, just, just holding e5, we have bishop a6, which seems to be uh, an interesting strategic exchange. You would want to weaken white on the light squares a bit after this move, kind of f4. It's a classic recipe uh, to try and do that, to weaken uh, the opponent on a color complex. Take out the bishop, the guardian of that color complex. So the light squares here have been slightly weakened. We have a3 being played. If bishop e2 then this should be fine for black. Just take an n knight d5. 
get rid of the problem piece basically should be fine so a3 it does create a kind of weakness on b3 this move so in that respect bishop e2 might be more solid we have bishop takes rook takes so white can't castle kingside clearly knight d5 queen d4 and we have here bishop e7 black probably doesn't get anything from queen b3 because of rook f3 kicking the queen and this position is getting very dangerous off to f5 and extremely dangerous off to f6 this could actually be a very very close to a really crushing position for example like this this is a nightmare scenario for black to avoid for sure so probably best not to encourage white with too many tempos uh, with queen b3 so bishop e7 was played f5 anyway it does seem kind of dangerous Magnus takes on f5 rook takes so Magnus castles into what seems to be quite dangerous here and it's white's turn to take off a bishop strategically bishop g5 weakening black on the dark squares a bit more we have bishop takes g5 and now very tempting and seemingly quite dangerous rook takes g5 pinning g7 uh, looking at knight f6 sometimes uh, so we have actually a sort of countering move kind of very calm actually queen b3 which does technically prevent white from castling that could be very very useful to cut across uh, to stop white castling queenside if king h8 for example just casting queenside does offer offer white some benefits here for the attack white should have a small edge so queen b3 uh, and now it's different this tempo gaining move rook g3 black can still be annoying with queen c2 stopping white castling uh, we have here knight f6 check and this does install a form pawn is there a downside here for this form pawn we have rook f8 check g6 <clears throat> and yes I know I've talked about form pawns being you know very very dangerous it really still does depend on the position like with a lot of things in chess there are no hard and fast rules apart from the actual rules of chess because <laughs> often strategies in one position just are, are terrible in one position but brilliant in another now this might be a liability basically this f6 pawn especially in end games so let's see what happened queen c3 check and black Magnus dominates the e file with rook e5, getting to uh, treble now the heavy pieces on the e file. Uh, does this really mean anything, though, concretely? We have b4, rook d5, queen f3, and not minding the queen's coming off, rook e4, h3. Uh, if queen takes e2 here, black should be the one that's better here. h4, it seems as though. Uh, white's pawns are slightly more vulnerable black should have an advantage so h3 was played h5 h4 king h7 and we get the same kind of thing actually so black does seem to be having the pressure on the pawns rook ff3 check rook e4 hitting h4 that's protected hitting h4 again king g1 uh, so perhaps it's a little bit controversial uh, to take here uh, white could maybe use the e-file getting on the e-file um, and that could be dangerous so in fact that was ignored here with king g8 we have rook e3 uh, king f8 rook takes rook takes rook d3 and of course Magnus is great sometimes at extracting advantages uh, in end games grinding sometimes king e8 the grinding hat might be activated here g3 so rook e6 hitting that form pawn and now d6 activating the king uh, to d7 king of two king takes d6 now immediately here on move 42 <laughs> if you've read hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy 42 is the answer to life the universe and everything on move 42 here unfortunately uh, it creates a bit of a weakness this answer a4 white should it seems well especially from an engine perspective hold tight here uh, it, and these pawns are more solid in this formation than this one um, if king g2 for example uh, check 
how does black actually make progress here possibly there is a longer term procedure because this doesn't seem to uh, that will that be a disaster for f6 now forget rook c3 what if white plays king f2 so the longer term procedure here might actually be to play c5 uh, and this position uh, is going to be bad after rook f5 and so in fact we could say the form pawn here is the downfall of white actually <laughs> yeah there is a, there is sometimes downsides of these things here it looks as though yeah black's going to be better after that much better after winning that pawn so anyway a4 helps black uh, it weakens those pawns a bit after king e5 and that pawn's challenged anyway Yeah, we have check king d5 check and the king comes to c4 so b4 being weaker now uh, this is very dangerous rook d7 that's taken with check king takes b4 so magnus a pawn up now and this pass pawn is pushed okay white's got a pass pawn as well that kicks the king away from the c pawn that check c4 rook b6 and now king d4 not minding the exchange of rooks this is very well calculated the game actually ended here going jones resigned uh if well he can't move the pawn because rook takes and if he plays rook takes e6 otherwise black's just going to make progress if he moves the rook anyway and and still be holding a6 so just imagine this a6 c3 a7 c2 white queens first but it's check and worse is here black has either the the very strong queen f1 checkmate move or if he just wants to win the queen there's that option as well uh so uh yeah it's just well calculated in this final position i'll take you to that final position game end after king uh, d4 so an interesting game uh, some provocation weakening on the light squares uh, some counterplay staying very calm with uh, quite aggressive kingside attack uh, there by Gowen Jones later to become one of the strongest UK grandmasters I believe he, he might have actually been an IM at the time of this game it's 2007 this game okay so uh, if you want to check out uh, a course uh, a free short and sweet course at Chessball check out Kings Crusher TV slash Sicilian four nights dash free you'll see that there okay and there's also um, a bigger version of that course paid for version Sicilian Four Nights. Okay, thanks very much.